So I'm Amy and I'm a second year PhD student from the University of Chester over at Thornton Science Park campus. And although I'm in the chemical engineering department, my background is biomedical science. So modelling and capazi is new to me and I was only introduced to it last year. And we want to investigate how cholesterol metabolism changes with ageing. So the first thing that we did was we conducted a literature review to see how this dysregulation is caused. And we found four main areas where cholesterol metabolism is affected. The first one is that with age, you absorb more cholesterol from the diet. This receptor, MPC101, which lines the small intestine, their number has been shown to increase with age, therefore you absorb more cholesterol. And that's one of the reasons that your LDL cholesterol raises with age. The second mechanism is that there's a decline in this enzyme CYP7A1, which is a key enzyme involved in bile acid synthesis. One of the ways that you excrete cholesterol is via the conversion of cholesterol to bile acids. So in the downregulation of this process, you, you don't lose as much cholesterol as it's not being formed into bile acids for its excretion. The third mechanism is that the receptor LDL, the LDL receptor on the on the liver, their numbers decrease with age, and that's the receptor that removes LDL cholesterol from the, the blood to put into the liver so that you can then excrete it. So the LDL is staying in your blood for a lot longer because it can't be removed. And then interestingly, the fourth way that we find that cholesterol is affected with age is that bacteria in the gut, they produce an enzyme called BSH, which modifies bile acids to make them more readily excreted. And with age, these bacteria, such as lactobacillus or bifidobacterium, they go down with age, therefore there's less enzyme, and you don't so readily excrete bile acids, and they are reabsorbed back to the liver. Therefore, your your way of removing cholesterol from the system is, is lessened. And this is important because these, this dysregulation leads to an accumulation of LDL cholesterol with age, which we know has an impact on the prevalence of CBD. And this is reviewed in our paper that we've just published in Aging Research Reviews. To model this, we used a pre-existing model, we call the FL, model that's housed in the, in the biomodels database and we added an additional 96 mechanisms and we focus primarily on what happens in the intestine, cholesterol synthesis, um, bile acid synthesis and reverse cholesterol transport. So this is what our new model looks like. So you can see here that we've got our intake of dietary cholesterol which is absorbed by this MPC101 receptor and then that's tra transported by hydromicron to the liver. We then got this enterohepatic circulation of bile acids, um, which is more um, mechanistic. This here is reverse cholesterol transport, and this is the mechanism by which cholesterol is removed from the tissues and taken back to the liver. We also included cholesterol biosynthesis, but it's too big to get on this diagram. So this A here in the liver, in the intestine and in the peripheral tissue, that represents our cholesterol biosynthesis, which has had to be put into a, a different SBGM diagram. And this little B here is our process of bile acid synthesis, which are on separate SBGMs. And this one here is our cholesterol biosynthesis, but it was too big, so I've had to chop it in half, so I can get it on the slide for you. And then this is our bile acid synthesis. So once we had our, our system, we were then able to use capacity to model it. And our system has eight compartments, 140 species, 144 reactions, and 266 parameters. And our reactions include a mixture of michaelis menten um, mass action, ping pong bye bye, and some functions that we were able to use from the previous model, or adapted them. So you can see here that one of the important changes that we made was that we added events to the feeding pattern. So now we have an intake of cholesterol every eight hours, so three times a day, eight hours. And this is our intake of cholesterol esters, and this is our intake of uh, free cholesterol. And 
85% of the cholesterol that you do intake is in this free cholesterol form. And we managed to get our pools of cholesterol in the liver and peripheral tissue to stay relatively stable, along with our lipoproteins there and our bile acids. And then we've got our excretion of cholesterol and our bile acids there. So once our system was made, we were then able to have a look at the effect of aging on it. So our four mechanisms that I mentioned, we started playing with the, the ground values for that. So we, we lowered the value for this enzyme. So we downregulated this enzyme activity. We, we lowered the number of these LDL receptors, therefore lowering the amount of cholesterol removed from the, from the blood. We upped this MPC-101 to, to show an increase in cholesterol absorption. And we also uh, decreased this, this bile acid and bacterial interaction. And we looked at this um, in the presence of different CETP genotypes. So CETP is one of the enzymes involved in reverse cholesterol transport. And it takes cholesterol from HDL to LDL, the bad cholesterol. And there's a genotype that's seen quite often in people exhibiting longevity, and they have low CETP. So we managed to show that and reflect that. These, uh, these samples here with these low CETP activity have a lot less, well, not a lot less, um, they have less cholesterol, or LDL, than those with high CETP activity. And you can see with age, the LDL increases as well. We were then able to have a look at the effect of cholesterol feeding on the system. So we upped our um, intake of 304 milligrams per day, which is the average for a male, to 1,000 milligrams. And our LDL levels didn't change. So our model responded as a hyper-responder in, resp in regards to the HDL and the LDL, which isn't unexpected as 62.5% of men won't exhibit a response in, in the literature. But we did see that the amount of excreted cholesterol increased, as did the accumulation in the liver. We were then able to mimic saturated fat feeding. As we didn't have saturated fat as a species in our model, we had to look at the areas that saturated fat affects. So we found that it affected the esterification of cholesterol going into HDL. Um, it upregulated this you know, CETP enzyme. It also downregulates our LDL receptor as well as increasing uh, cholesterol uh, synthesis. So we're then able to simulate saturated fat feeding, and you can see that the LDL and our pools of hepatic and peripheral cholesterol esters increase. Interestingly, HDL decreases though. From our local analysis, it was made clear that the most sensitive parameters were ones that we had to assume the kinetics for. And these specifically relate to our like, lipoprotein dynamics and our um, reverse cholesterol transport. We then conducted a global analysis and we first, we varied our known parameters and there were 151 of those. And we kept stable our 113 unknown parameters. And the amount of change in LDL is quite minimal. So it illustrates that cholesterol metabol metabolism is a robust system. However, when we did it the other way around, and we varied our unknown parameters, you can see that the range is massive. And it's due to a lack of data, so we've, we had to assume that many. And this paper's just been accepted, so it should hopefully be fully um, nice PDF soon. And that's our wider models ID there. And there's new references, and at this point I'd like to thank my supervisors and you for having me. And they won't 
won't exhibit a response. Some people do, and their, their LDL will go up loads. So you might be one of the unlucky ones, but there are people that can eat as much as they want, and it won't affect them. So how will your response or hyper respond to And you want to try to uh, simulate the effect of some statins on this? Yeah, our um, model is really um, robust in that area of biological synthesis. And that's because we managed to get um, kinetic data. So our model didn't respond to statins, but then some people don't. So again, it's. But, but that's the. Yeah, it should have done. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. It seems to me that your model mm -hmm. uh, has quite wide applicability yeah. in a technical sense. Yeah. So, do you intend to take it forward in terms of protecting the IP in your model and licensing results, for example? I haven't considered that. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about the, the CETP that you mentioned? Yeah. So, is that tested clinically? Yeah, there's some, there are populations that exhibit low CETP activity because they've got a genes type for it, and they exhibit exceptional longevity, living way past 100 years old. And they've tried to um, recreate this with CETP inhibitors, and it, in, there are varying outcomes, but some of them are successful in lowering CETP rates. Some of them are, there are a few out there, there's a few people that are trying that. Oh, yeah. Thank you.